All right, so I have posted my first two components. I posted my black type. I posted my color type. They were both just screen grabs. The screen grab allowed me to capture a little bit of the black background, so it kind of shows the edges of the poster format. The last thing I need is my finished poster, which is at full resolution, at least 16 by 20 by 300. And now I just need to make the background all fill in with white. I gave it a little extra space because I didn't like how close it was to the top and bottom. So I'm going to say edit fill with white. You can make it larger than 16 by 20. So right now my image size is 16 by 21. I had this gradient in, and I was thinking that was my, my background. What's great is I can take that gradient, and I can just Command T, and I can adjust it any way I want. But I don't want it to have a tangency, an uncomfortable touching with the letters, right? So how do you fix tangencies? You push them. You like increase the overlap or you decrease it, right? But you don't let tangencies happen. Like if this line is right lined up with there, you want to avoid that uncomfortable touching. That's a little too close to me. So that's why I'm sh ah, shifting it a little bit. There we go. So now all of that feels intentional. All of that feels intentional. You know, nothing's touching right at the line. Same thing with your type and your spot illustration. You want to avoid tangencies. So I might push my knock, my type, on all of its different layers. And I might just push it a little bit to the left. to avoid the tangency right there. And I might take my spot illustration and I might push that a little bit to the right or shrink it so that everything feels really intentional, like nothing's touching too, too strangely. And I'm almost there. I'm just gonna stretch the type a little bit more because you can just use your arrow key, but you can also use your transform. I'm just going to stretch it out just a little bit. Okay, good. Now, that's a pretty straightforward layout, and it's a gradient background. Now I want to add some texture, some variation, especially because the, the spot illustration coloring I'm using is so straightforward with the, with the, the duotone hard edge. So what I did was I went to Pixabay, and just like we learned in compositing, you can find texture fills. I'm going to introduce you guys through this and entering into digital painting through the next two classes to CMYK halftone separation. What that does is take all of your millions of colors and separates it into colored dots for printing like this into what are called Gaussian roses. So I just looked up halftone in Pixabay. I had three pages. And I then downloaded some of these, these backgrounds. Then I can take those backgrounds. We'll do this really cheesy one. See, I kind of like this one. And just drag it on into your poster format. I'm going to drag it behind my text, right? Or I could even try it on top of my text, even on top of my illustration. Let's see. Command T. Hold down shift, I'm gonna stretch it, and you'll see how it locks with my background. That's why I like doing that gradient. It will lock to it. And then I can play with blending modes. It's like confetti party. And I can play with opacity. Remember, white and black are not colors, so they often won't be affected by the different blending modes. But overlay is kind of interesting there. And then I can just sync it back, you know, behind the illustration. And then I can play with opacity and let that gradient show through. Okay. 
I can do that with as many textures as I like. But you just want to make sure they always sync up with the border of your background. So that's why I require you have a border. So you're really controlling the edge. That matters for printing. And these blending modes really make a difference, right, with what you see and what you don't see and the opacity. And you don't want your background to be so distracting either, right? So everything should be in balance. So because our campus colors are green and blue, I'm mostly using that, but hopefully making it kind of exciting having you see the color of the type is slightly less opaque so that that texture is showing through at least the magenta and i'll probably play with this more i could even do things like take my my other spot illustration coloring move it on top my full spectrum color one enlarge it And line it up and do something like I did with the text with it. So I can fill this with a color overlay and then move that behind my image and then play with it as an offset. So there's a lot you can do to have fun with your, your illustration and your project. So I can do that and then I can add another effect to it which is a stroke and with this stroke instead of white I can use the cyan. And what I love about layer styles is you can always turn them on and off. So what do you guys think? Do you like it better with that or with that? Yeah, it can get to be too much. And I can always just downplay it a little bit. Maybe I want just a little hint of it. And now I think that helps. You're allowed to change your mind. Now the problem with it is I get these little blurbs that come from like little corrections you would have to do, right? So if I want to avoid that, it's easy enough to avoid. I just turn that aspect off, that one stroke off. Or if I'm really concerned about it, I can just trim it. but I kind of like it there. Yeah. You guys have some fun with it. All right, so don't take it too seriously. That's my finished poster for now. I'm gonna save this as a PSD so save as, this is my final poster for assignment six. And I might go back to it before I print it for like a, a final portfolio or for a student, student show submission. And then I could save it as a JPEG and post it at full resolution, but it, I really don't need to. We made it so big so it can print, not so that it can show up on Canvas really big. So instead, I'm just going to make it pretty big on the screen and then do a screen grab which also captures a little bit of the black paper edge so you can see the the borders that I designed for it. And then I post that and I'm done with the assignment. Come on. There we go. So the three things you need for this assignment. Black type, 
colored type and then your finished poster with a background and with a border. And even if you didn't do the work from home on Monday, I showed you just with today's videos, as long as you have a text blocking sketch, how you can just knock it out with Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop. Since that's the section we're in, the Adobe section. So finished poster with background and border. All right. Good deal. So now I save all these things into my assignment six folder. There's lots of files associated, right? All of these vectors, all of these different type designs, and then the screen grabs too. All of that can help you out. But ultimately you need to know what your finished PSD is. And remember, you might change your mind so this is what I worked out for type on Monday. I like this so much more, what I did for today. So type, it's all about kind of how you design it, how you play with it. Don't overthink it. And don't try to be too, too elaborate, right? You're just trying to communicate clearly. That's what a client is, how a client is best served. All right.